solenoid. We want to design a solenoid with some given inputs here. But we want to design a solenoid that has a magnetic uh, field strength of 6 times 10 to the minus 4 teslas at the center of the solenoid. And we have an electrical current source available that can give us 0.8 amps, 800 milliamps, but we want 6 times 10 to the minus 4 tesla at the uh, middle of our uh, solenoid. Well, to answer this question, we're going to use Ampere's Law, a simplified version of it. But if we would have a path and we would add up the magnetic field that's parallel to some uh, length elements, so we're going to take magnetic field parallel to a length, we'll find that we've got the magnetic constant mu naught times the current that penetrates our loop. We're going to go around an Amperian loop and add up magnetic field that's parallel to, I'm going to use straight paths for this uh, particular case. So our solenoid, coil of wire, if I would take sort of a horizontal cut through this coil of wire, I could identify regions where the wire uh, current is coming up through the paper and then down through the paper, up through the paper, down, up, down, up, down, this uh, helical uh, coil of wire. Now I'm going to draw a, uh, a loop, could draw it at various places, but I'm going to draw an Ampere loop that's straight lines and looks like this. So my Ampere loop has four sides to it. And we want to know the magnetic field in here. Well, let's observe something about the currents in here and what they're doing. Um, if you use the right-hand rule, current coming up, there's going to be a magnetic field created in this direction. And this one's going to create a magnetic field in this direction. And this one's going to create a magnetic field in this direction. So circles around these uh, wires so forth and so on. For the currents down here, they're going into the paper. So for my right hand rule here, I have to put my thumb down into the paper and then my fingers show the direction of the magnetic field and they're this way. And hopefully you can see what's happening inside the solenoid. The magnetic field lines are adding up inside the solenoid. And that generates the magnetic field is in, that's in here. It's not quite uniform, but uh, they are adding up. We're going to do a few approximations, but if I look on the path here, uh, so we will have some magnetic field um, inside the solenoid. On the path here, the magnetic field from this current is coming down the magnetic field from this current is going up. So they essentially cancel. I've got zero magnetic field on this wire. Same thing happens over here, zero magnetic field. And if we take this uh, path out here a long distance away from the currents, the magnetic field will be zero out there. So we only have magnetic field that's non-zero on the path that's inside the uh, the solenoid. So let's say this has a length L for this rectangle and we have a magnetic field. So I can do this summation up here. Inside the solenoid I get B times L and then I've got zero for the other three sides because I'm claiming the magnetic field is zero on this side, on this side, on this side. So B times L on the one side. Over here, I've got mu naught. How much current passes through the loop? Going down here through the loop. Well, the drawing I have is generalized. And there will be n turns of uh, wire going down through here. So I use capital N. Each wire carries a current I. So there we have our uh, expression. I'm going to solve this for n divided by L. 
So I have b on the left side. I'm going to divide by mu naught and i on both sides. And I'm going to divide on the left and right sides by l. So that gives me n over l. And now let's put in the numbers that we have. For the magnetic field, 6 times 10 to the minus 4 tesla. The magnetic constant is exactly 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. This is a defined constant. Other constants build off of this value. But this is an unusual constant. It's not measured. It's defined. Mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 in standard metric units. And then the I needs to be in standard metric units. So that would be 0.8 amps. That is our N over L. If you do this calculation, you find that you get 597 for the value of N over L. This would be the number of turns per meter. N is the number of turns per of wire that we have. L is the length in meters, standard metric units. So 597 um, turns per meter. Well, let's suppose that we build a solenoid where L is 0.1 meters. So if L equals 0 0.1 meters, then what do you think the value of N should be? Well, I have to multiply 597 by L, so 597 times 0 0.1. And roughly, I need 60 turns of wire over this 10 centimeter distance. And there we've designed a solenoid with a uh, current of 800 milliamps available, a desired magnetic field of 6 times 10 to the minus 4 in the middle of the solenoid. We used Ampere's law, a simplified version of it, uh, with the summation symbol summing over four separate paths. Only one part of the path had a non-zero magnetic field. That's the part inside the solenoid where the magnetic fields created by each wire, they're adding together. In between the coils, they cancel at zero. And far away from the current, the magnetic field will be weak, approximately zero. So I hope you uh, could follow along with those uh, calculations and Ampere's Law. You should do some more practicing on your own. Of course, if I would have chosen L to be 0.2 meters, then we need 120 turns of wire. So there are many possible answers. N over L needs to be 597. But uh, if you choose a different L, you'll get a different number of turns of wire. If you pack the wire in more closely, um, there you are. So keep practicing.